Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now today we're going to take these, they're called wooden shelf dividers. Basically they're intended, I think, to go the tops of closets, but hey, this is essentially just that. Now we did take measurements and I did buy ones that were supposed to fit in here, but because I, th I think because they're like enamel dipped, that epoxy dipped, they're not exactly the measurements that they said they were going to be online. They're just a slightly bit bigger and I thought they were just going to fit perfect. So you'll see once Jimmy gets them opened and unboxed, we, they aren't able to stand straight up. They kind of like bend a little bit, but he said he didn't care. He doesn't care about that kind of stuff. He's like, I'm a guy. It doesn't make a difference. I'm the only one who's going to see it. Um, so he just, you know, sometimes he just really wants to get it done. It's like get her done. So I'm sharing this with you because this is how we're going to turn this piece of maybe dining room or office furniture into bedroom furniture. We're going to use storage bins. Um, this is going to be over the course of two videos, I believe, because I believe we do the bottom storage in um, its own video because we have all of these different things to store. Actually, I think it's going to be in the same video with the nightstand. But anyway, as far as the top's concerned, we're, we're just going to show you the tips that we learned as we went so like I mentioned we found these on Amazon but ended up buying them at Walmart because Amazon had big packages like eight and ten and we really only needed four he has two shelves that he wanted to divide his clothes up to in three sections three sections each so really only needed two dividers per shelf now uh, like I mentioned previously they don't quite fit um, he got a little like nervous at first but then he realized they are quite pliable um, since they're not like made out of stainless steel or anything so they do bend a little bit they're like wire as you can see here he's like oh boy uh oh you know they don't quite fit so I said just try to put them in a little bit of an angle and he did and then he was able to just push the push it kind of straight up but you'll see I'm going to take a, a video here in a few minutes from the head on once they're all in and you can kind of see how wonky they are but again he said not objectionable to him the other thing was that I just had him place them in sections like where the two like two here, two here kind of thing. Because once we get uh, the, f the clothes and the size of the clothes put in, then we'll know if we need to move them over or put them back or such. So that's pretty much the next step is trying to figure out what clothes are gonna go in which cubby. Now obviously this, his system is not gonna work for everybody, okay? And if you have like more petite clothes or just tops or just, um, or just undergarments or whatever and you, need to divide your shelf up into four maybe your shelf is wider maybe you want six spaces maybe you just want to use baskets you can this is just how we're doing it for Jim and it seems to work for us really well right now so um, again he's going to live with it for a while he, he's off to a really great start with it he really does love the way it turned out so um, yeah we're just going to go with it but you do what works best for you again these are just tips and tricks that we've come up with as we got along okay so you can kind of see there a little bit that they're kind of wonky. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around here in a minute so you can get a better shot. But um, what he's doing first and next actually is he's redusting. And then when we move the furniture, sometimes dust gets on there. And he actually realized that I don't think he's like, I don't know that I did dust up here because we found a missing fish of my dad. So <laughs> he's like... I thought I did when I took all the cake plates down, but how did we just move this with this fish on? And he was really funny about it. But um, I said, it's okay, sweetie. It's really okay. So we just took off Swiffer 360. You guys know that you're supposed to like rub that to get some static clean going. I hope you know that, right? So these are a little wonky, as, as I mentioned previously, and we don't really know just yet how we're putting his clothes. So as you guys have known, if you've been around for a while, that we have purged a, a lot of our wardrobe um, We've kept the things that we love, the essentials, the things that we need, really. Um, and actually, we put this dresser together um, before we had our laundry finished. So we is more clothes. There are more clothes that have to be put away. Um, but there is clothes in the laundry basket on this day. Um, so we, uh, to rest assured that there's going to be plenty of room when we're done. However, um, it's just a perfect amount of space once we get all the clean clothes put away. Okay. Now, Jim has, um, he's a guy. <laughs> Jim has a variety of t-shirt assortment. So he has short sleeve t-shirts that he likes to sleep in. 
short sleeve t-shirts that he wears around the house in case company comes, short sleeve t-shirts that he wears if we go out on a date. Then he has long sleeve t-shirts that he wears to bed and long sleeve t-shirts that he wears around the house. Then he has pajama pants um, and then he's got pajama shorts and as well as outdoor pants and some outdoor shorts. So I know you've never seen Jim in shorts. I love Jim in shorts and every once in a while he'll throw them on and we'll just run out and do something fun, especially if it's kind of warm out. He is so self-conscious of his white skin, but I'm not. I think he's, you know, obviously I think he's very handsome, but that's beside the point. I digress. Anyhow, <laughs> but I, he, I got, he's got these shorts and I just love them. They go like I've got them at the gap and they're just really cute to go with these like cute t-shirts and stuff. So we're just having to figure out exactly how many different areas we want to divide them up into. So we weren't sure if the top, just the two middle drawers were going to be for clothes. Was the bottom one going to be for clothes? He kind of was thinking that he wanted to keep his, I don't know, like grooming supply stuff, the stuff from the top of his dresser. He was thinking he wanted to keep it on the bottom shelf. But I said, well, a lot of stuff that was on your dresser was decorative display items. And I think that they should go in the top shelf so that First of all, you don't have to stretch up there to get clothes every day. Secondly, they're on display. And if we end up do end up putting fabric over the doors, we can stop at that top shelf, just like we did um, in a previous video. We made these fabric-covered boards to um, hide storage behind these. Um, we possibly could put fabric on there. We've back and forth. He doesn't know what he wants or if he wants to. Um, so we're just living with it right now. But I said, put this pretty display stuff on top. The collect is the watch collection and your hat collection and stuff like that. And then on the bottom shelf, you can do like your grooming stuff and your deodorant and that kind of stuff on the right. And then like socks and underwear on the left. And it actually worked out really well. That is what he ended up doing. I have a variety of bins from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar General. I've been collecting for a while um, just for this event. To be honest, we talked about all of the purging and reorganizing that we're going to do throughout our house. So I've just been like, when I see something that I like that's sort of practical to me, I pick it up. I figure we can use it somewhere. And to be honest with you, sometimes we use it and we had something in its place already. So now I have those um, that we can either get rid of or use in a different area. So, you know, it is one of those things that is ever evolving because um, your life changes, your needs change, your stuff changes and that sort of things. Okay. So now that he's kind of got it all figured out what he wants to do, um, we're going to go ahead and get to putting everything away. Now on the bottom shelf already he has these baskets that I got from the Dollar General. I hauled them on my channel ages ago. They're actually kind of a really cool bronze, very geometric, um, tall basket with leather handles. I have two large ones and one small one. And I thought they were perfect for a large one for socks, a large one for underwear, and a small one for handkerchiefs. Jim doesn't wear undershirts anymore. He did when I first met him, but he stopped wearing the undershirts. Um, he just likes to wear his t-shirts. Um, so um, he didn't need a bin for anything like that. And they ended up working really well. They actually hold all of his things very, very well. Now, Jim not only um, was grew up as a child of, an, but basically he calls himself an Air Force brat, but he also uh, had a small stint in the army where he basically learned how to roll his clothes and that has become a thing for him where um, it's often his preferred way of storing things. It's his preferred way of packing and it's often his preferred way of storing things in his dresser. Um, so this is kind of different for him. Um, we are um, have the option if we want if he wants to roll his underwear so that you can maybe fit more underwear in there but it's worked out really really well the way it is and I think he's just going to lay everything flat now it does turn out that he has like a couple of things that he will roll because they don't there are not enough of them to require their own cubby but we'll talk about that in a few minutes but basically what we decided to do is to put sort of the dress t-shirts to the right the everyday um wear around the house t-shirts in the middle or the going out t-shirts I should say so that the the fancy going out t-shirts the <laughs> the everyday going out t-shirts and pants are all going to be on the top because he's um it's that's a little bit above eye level for him or just around forehead level so he has um 
I guess looking down, he has much better access to the shelf. Oh no, when he's sitting, that's what it was. That's why he decided when he's sitting on his bed, which it's not up yet, but he realized that when he's sitting on his bed, he can actually access his pajamas and his day, his house clothes and his underwear and socks from the bed. Um, if he keeps them on the top, the bottom two shelves. So his outdoor clothes and stuff are all going to be on the top. Now we left a pretty big space for his pants because he's got jeans and he's got um, cargo pants that he likes. Um, but he also has those shorts that I mentioned. So what we decided to do is to make room a big space and he's going to put his pants and roll his cargo short. I mean, roll his shorts. Um, they're going to take up the same space since he just has two or three pairs of shorts. So we initially just put everything in the way it was folded, basically how you would see it at the gap. Um, but they were a little too long. So we had decided to do sort of like uh, the KonMari method where you want to make everything the same size and fit really well. And that's what we did. We basically folded everything in thirds, um, you know, uh, folded both arms in and then folded the neck down halfway or to the halfway point and then folded the final third. And that's what fit perfectly, uh, dip depth wise with his shirt. So Jim is an extra large, if that makes a difference to you, if you're a piece of furniture, you know, um, when it comes to folding the clothes that we store in our dressers, uh, that makes a difference too, because my t-shirts happen to be a lot longer than Jim's because of the plus size. Um, so I have to fold mine in fourths. I can't fold mine in thirds. Uh, thirds won't fit. I fold, uh, my, my t-shirts have to get folded in fourths because they're longer. So just figure out what works for you. Try different configurations of folding. The important part and the key that I want to point out to you is try to keep the fold, the single fold or the single edge out and try to, if you can, have a representation of the t-shirt out uh, or the shirt so that you can look at the edge of what you see and know what shirt it is. And when you go to pull it out, you'll just grab the one single edge hold the rest of the pile up or down and and not take all the clothes with you if that makes any sense it's just these little tips that actually do really help in the long run um so it just from us to you um i'm grateful because he's been working so hard that he's actually getting sort of a sit down job now um he is popping up every once in a while because he does have ants in his pants but he's able to sit down there and fold on that table on that edge of that counter while um, he stacks his things or I'm folding them and handing them to him. Um, he's stacking them there and then he's going able to fit them in where they belong. But I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful that we're able to do this together, honestly. He has helped me so much in the last few months that it's the very, very least I can do to pay him back. Now, Jim is not the kind of guy who just wants to relinquish um, the 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 duties um to me uh, he would never want me to just put this all away for him he really is a hands-on uh, kind of guy it's part of his like the, his learning process he wants to be able to remember where he put it remember where it goes and, and remember how it goes back so there is um pajama t-shirts long sleeve pajama t-shirts short sleeve pajama t-shirts as i mentioned um, and then pajama pants which will go across the bottom Currently, all of his pajama pants, sans one, are dirty. Um, only his Harry Potter really warm um, pajamas. We actually kept each kept out um, one war one cold weather pair of pajamas each, because you never can tell. Like by the before you get to transition your clothes, you might have a really cold night or really cold day. So we decided to do that as well. Um, we have a whole playlist of cleaning and organizing um, as well as a, a little playlist of hacks too if you guys are interested um, all of the you just click on my face it takes you to my channel and you slide over to where it says playlists and all of my playlists should be organized by categories that you pretty well can understand I hope okay so the um, the fact that this furniture was not designed for clothes was the part that I really wanted to emphasize in today's video, in today's voiceover, because there's a lot of DIY flips that people are doing these days. Now, my family has been doing this forever. Um, I kind of made a joke that we only bought like 
four pieces of furniture in 50 years of of my family owning the home <laughs> they only probably bought like five or six new pieces of furniture everything else was um a garage sale or a hand-me-down or gift from a friend um or bought at a bought at a tag sale or something so um we've repurposed furniture my whole life was the point i was trying to get to so when we were looking for an armoire and we realized we had this piece of furniture and we could utilize it, um, we just tried to figure out how we could make it uh, usable for clothes without altering it. And that's another thing. If you find a piece of furniture in the yard sale or buy it, I mean, uh, in the garbage or find it, uh, buy it from a yard sale or from the marketplace, you can alter it all you want. It would be really nice if these had like permanent upright shelves or perhaps even drawers uh, in inserted in them but I would never do anything to alter this piece of furniture um it isn't it is a family heirloom at, f after all you know plus I don't know that I could screw into this mahogany anyway <laughs> no, I'm getting I'm sure I could but I wouldn't so um as you just saw a minute ago Jim was adjusting um the 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 spaces the the bars he actually likes the clothes to be snug in the little area he feels that it, it'll have less of a tendency to fall off on a pile and I kind of agree with him we were just trying to figure out exactly like do we do something with the shorts do we take the shorts and the bathing suits and do something different with them do we do something different with the pajama shorts and um that type of thing do we put pajama shorts and shorts together we're just we're working it out and that's when we came across the realization that if we took the outdoor shorts and rolled them up with the pants that would work and they would be out of the way for him to get his pants every day and if we took the pajama shorts and did the same thing with his pajama pants then that would just be perfect because he doesn't wear pajama shorts every day um, I'm currently going through menopause and like to keep the house a little cooler than he likes <laughs> but there does come an occasion when it gets a little warm in here and he wants to wear shorts okay so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the cute stuff um after all the clothes we went through this box we have two long boxes a cardboard box and a long plastic box on these benches that actually contain the stuff that was on jim's dresser and in his nightstand now, we're not going to do much with his nightstand today. Just a couple of things will probably end up going on there. But for the most part, we're just going to do the decorative stuff that goes on Jim's top shelf as well as grooming stuff in Jim's bottom shelf. Now, we are going to do some rearranging. So things that he used to keep in his nightstand, we're going to start putting in the cabinet and vice versa. So um, you won't see us fill the nightstand today, but you will see some nightstand stuff if that makes any sense. Okay. So now we're just going over like what baskets to use. This is what we have. This is what we may need. What will fit where and such and such. So um, on the top shelf, Jimmy has, I have this really cute hat stand that I found at a, at a thrift store that I used to volunteer at. And it just has a, it's turquoise blue and has a gold J on it. And I got it for my sister because her name's Jane. Um, and then when she moved, she gave it back to me. Do I want it back? And he loves it. I know it's turquoise and it's not really girly colors it's kind of fancy um but he has these two cute really f cute fedoras well I think they're handsome I think he looks cute in them but um that he just keeps on there he likes to wear them to funerals in the autumn and the spring or the winter um they're very nice that way but he um he keeps them on that hat holder and displayed on the top he has a couple of trinket trays. Um, one of them actually was a trophy, a bowling trophy that my mom had gotten. So it means a lot to me. And it means a lot to me that he likes, wants to use it. He's never gotten to meet my mom as well as I've never gotten to meet his dad. But we do feel a kinship towards each other's parents um, that have passed on. We feel that they have had a very similar upbringing. And they've had a very intricate, 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 yeah. An, in, an integral integral okay I can't they've had a big part in us meeting <laughs> from heaven and that's our belief and if you don't believe that that's fine but um we it just means a lot to me that he wants to keep that and keep it close and use it um just to put his uh nice leather bracelets on or his fancy watch sometimes he switches out what he keeps on it which is why I'm saying that and we have a couple of like silver plated trays that just, you know, coin trays or um, sometimes he wears different rings or sometimes he wears um, 
uh, different necklaces that he likes to wear sometimes and he just wants to switch them out from every day so he puts them in a little trinket tray um, on his used to be on his dresser and now they'll be at the top shelf but we're basically trying to just go through everything that we had there is hair stuff there is jewelry there is uh, tchotchkes I know tchotchkes is a big word but something that just means something to us to Jim really because it's Jim's space he has a little wolf snow globe that I bought him when we first met. He has a little, do you guys remember those little like plastic things that have etchings on the inside? Like they laser etch in the inside. He has one from, um, from 9-11. It's basically the, the, the firefighters uh, putting the American flag up. And because we lived in New York during 9-11, it means a lot to us to just have that representation. He wants to just have it to remember if, if that makes any sense. So just little things like that he's going to display, display on the top shelf. Now I will tell you after we filmed this and after we lived with him for a couple of days, we found some other things that we said, oh, it would be really great if we could display them on the top shelf. And I'm coming up, trying to come up with some DIY ways of creating a place for him to basically hang his pocket watch collection. Um, at seems like every year for Christmas I would buy him a wolf pocket watch <laughs> from one place or another um with this one has a leather case and this one has a box and this one has the couples on it just because I love my husband and this is something that he loves um so none of them really I mean they all work they don't some of them need batteries some of them need to be wound up but he doesn't really wear a pocket watch anymore like he used to when I first met him um so he wants to display them. So he found them all, kept them off to the side and said, maybe we can come up with some nice way to display them. And I said, absolutely, honey. As soon as we get back from Texas and we get that room cleaned up, I'd be happy to go in there and help um, figure out something that we can make. And I have a couple of ideas. So I, I will definitely share it with you guys when it comes, okay? Now, the, the nightstands, we've always put pieces of fabric over our nightstands to protect the wood. Jim and I both... Um, keep water at our bedside so the furniture is finished not painted even though we use coasters sometimes the condensation can get extra especially when the room's so hot and especially when we keep vaporizers and stuff um, they can build up a lot of moisture and get a lot of condensation so we still like to keep fabric down um, underneath all of our stuff so Jim has this really pretty wolf handkerchief that he wants to keep down there now I have said that I wanted to um, decorate the room with like basically a balanced look before we add our own personal touches to it. And what I mean by that is Jim and I frequently swap sides. Uh, we haven't done it for quite some time, but it is something we've done in the past. We'll just like, I'm tired of sleeping on this side of the bed. I'm tired of sleeping on that side of the bed. Um, so if we can decorate those areas mostly neutrally, then we can just each take our personal items and swap to the other side. And um, that's what I want to do. We don't have everything that we're going to put in this room yet. Even to this day, um, voiceovering this days and days later, um, we don't have everything that we're going to put in the room. But it's coming along. It's coming along. Um, I was going to say slowly, but it's not really quite that slow. Um, but the personal items like that, that, that wolf handkerchief that he has that he keeps on his table side, that's one of those personal touches that he has um, added for himself, okay? He also has a little cute little wolf rug that he has where he wipes his feet before he gets into bed too. So just those cute little personal touches that add that little bit of something to our spaces, okay? Now, as he's going through and we're figuring out um, where he wants to keep everything, we have been discussing this whole time about what we're going to store in the bottom two uh, cabinets. Um, for years and years, we have kept a medicine basket. Basically, Jim and I take supplements and vitamins and both have prescriptions that we keep in a basket and I fill both of our medication cobblers once a week and pretty much the whole time that basket has sat on the tall dresser. Now, I say that because it's only been my dresser for about two years. Uh, before that, it was Jim's dresser the whole time. And um, it's just been whoever's had the tall dresser has had the medicine on there. Um, 
So one of the things I definitely wanted to do after talking with him is if he didn't need to utilize those two bottom cabinets, he actually originally said we could put the linens in there. But I said, we'd like to keep the trunks. And I mentioned the bed, the window seat, you know, um, I said, we keep the medicine down there. The other thing is we, whenever we have extra medication, like when my beautiful friend Kay, she, um, sends me medications like from Costco she sends me vitamins and supplements and allergy meds and nose sprays and all these wonderful things um we were always kept our extra meds in a Walmart a reuse like the reusable kind of Walmart shopping bags the blue ones um and we kept them on the floor because we really don't have we don't have a pantry we don't have oh not a pantry we don't have a linen closet we have very little storage in our bathroom we don't have a just under the sink storage for toiletries and towels. Um, so we don't really have a ton of storage on our side. Um, so we basically just kept this bag on the floor. But now that we have the cabinet and we've discussed it, we've taken these um, storage things that you'll see um, in a video in a couple of days that uh, how we organized all of the medications and stuff. So while we are putting and decorating gym stuff, we are discussing the future of what we're going to do as we go you know he might see something and say oh let's put it down here and I'll be like well what if we do this down here and that's just how we work out the plans okay now this is sort of like the most fun and tedious process to me um, dealing with every single little thing that he owns or that I own and deciding do we want this now a lot of people have a lot of philosophies on you know, if you haven't, if you can't decide in two seconds, if you don't have a place for it, if you don't have a need for it, all these different things. But listen, what it all comes down to is it's you and it's yours and it's your space. And if you're not feeling overwhelmed with the things in your space, then you decide what to do with it. You decide what's best for you and your things. Okay. Don't let anybody else tell you how you have to feel. There's a lot of psychology into how things make people feel. People, they say that, you know, people who work with cluttered spaces have cluttered minds. But you know what, honey? That's not true for everybody. And if it's not true for you, then don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Okay? I work the complete opposite. I have to have things around me to get that creative juice. I'm sorry, I just do. And if there's an exception, if I'm an exception to the rule, there's got to be many, 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 many exceptions to the rule. Here's the thing. If there was only one right answer, there'd only be one right philosophy. And we all know that that's not true. There's Japanese organizations, there's Swedish organizations, there's, um, there's you know, all different things all over the United States of America. It's women all over YouTube, women from Canada, all over the world telling you how the best way is to organize your thing and the psychology behind X, Y, and Z. And you know what? If there was only one answer, there would only be one answer. So definitely listen. Be honest with yourself. I tell you this, guys, all the time. Be honest with yourself. If something is too much, if you're getting overwhelmed, step back, start over, and be brutal if you need to. But don't just downsize your stuff because someone else tells you it's what you need to do. Because, yeah. Now, there is that whole philosophy that people have been saying to me lately that, um, you know, what happens when you go and who, you know, think about how somebody will feel clearing out your space. Well, to be honest with you, if I'm getting close to thinking I'm ready to go, I'm sure I'll downsize because I will be thinking about that. And if I'm 50 and I suddenly go, I'm sure that when somebody cleans out my space, it probably won't seem as overwhelming as it is sad because unexpectedly I went, if that makes any sense to you. Um, but anyway, uh, that's just my f feelings on the whole situation. I have mentioned to you guys before that clearing out um, stuff of my parents with my siblings or by myself was very cathartic for me. It made it very easy um, to move on. Um, I, I almost wish that I lived in New York still to go through when my brother passed away to help my sisters because, again, that's just a very easy, um, an easy way that I have always been able to move on from loss. So, so that's it for now. I mean, we um, mostly have got the space cleared off and Jim has done a really, really excellent job. 
Um, if you guys have any questions at all, you go ahead and leave them in the comments and do the liking and the sharing and subscribing. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time.